I used to think that mid-air collisions occurred between pilots that simply lost sight of each other. Someone gets distracted, they look down, they get focused on a sensor, their radar, something else. They forget their responsibility for deconfliction and two aircraft collide. I I'll tell you though, that's not the case. I was in a mid-air collision, and it was a typical flight. Typical maneuvers were flown, and I never once lost sight of my wingman. He died that day, and I, I almost died. And I'll tell you, I saw the entire thing unfold in front of me, and by the time I realized that there was gonna be a mid-air collision, it was too late. There was nothing I could do with my aircraft. My lift vector, my energy state had already set a collision course, and it, it was too late. Since 2000, the United States Air Force has lost 10 aircraft and five lives due to mid-air mishaps. Aerial collisions represent nearly 25% of the United States F-16 operations-related flight mishap losses. To address this issue, pilots engage in advanced training and perform additional flights but more needs to be done. I think the current mid-air collision techniques are not sufficient right now. We still have accidents every year, and uh, lives are being lost, and aircraft are being lost, and it's degrading our combat capability. The Air Force Research Laboratory recognizes the need for an automatic system to avoid mishaps, and is developing the Automatic Air Collision Avoidance System, or Auto ACAS. Building on the success of AFRL's automatic ground collision avoidance system, Auto ACAS would extend this protection to the skies, activating when aircraft approach too closely for safety, and automatically maneuvering the aircraft out of harm's way. The system takes into account three critical requirements, do no harm, do not interfere, and prevent collision. Uh, the first requirement is to do no harm. That means that whatever solution we come up with, whatever we do, we cannot endanger the aircraft or the pilot. Uh, so we, auto ACAS can never be the cause of a collision, auto ACAS can never overstress the aircraft, and auto ACAS can never put a pilot in danger. The second requirement is do not interfere, and that means that the auto ACAS system cannot interfere with the mission that the pilot needs to perform. So if a pilot needs to go up and train to get proficient at basic fighter maneuvers, or air combat maneuvers, then the auto ACAS system has to allow him to do those maneuvers without interfering with his ability to train and become proficient. The third requirement is actually to avoid collisions. That allows you to predict trajectories and determine when a collision might be possible and take mitigation strategies to avoid colliding with another aircraft. The auto ACAS algorithms have been refined to operate in a highly dynamic air combat environment and to provide protection during basic fighter maneuvers and air combat maneuvers. Auto ACAS receives information from other aircraft, uses this information to identify potential threats, and chooses whether to maintain course, temporarily lower altitude, or roll to avoid. Maneuvers follow pilot rules of the road, training rules that the pilots prefer and are taught to perform. A built-in safety buffer ensures that avoidance maneuvers are automatically executed at exactly the right moment. Both aircraft do not have to be equipped with auto ACAS for the system to work. The system can calculate the position of the conflicting aircraft over data link if both aircraft have data links on board. Or if necessary, the system can use other sources such as radar to calculate and execute an avoidance maneuver without communicating with the conflicting aircraft. My name is Major Anthony Massett, my call sign is Mamba, and I'm an instructor at the United States Air Force Test Pilot School. Also, I work on the auto ACAS program with the 416 Flight Test Squadron. Simulating flight test points is very important, especially for a test such as the auto ACAS program. 
The test points that we're doing are very detailed and require the pilot to meet very tight tolerances on position and speed to achieve the activations that we're trying to do. So these sims are very important to allow us to successfully complete flight tests without a lot of delay or repeats of the test points. In AFRL's AVTAS control room, flight test team members can prepare for auto ACAS flight tests. This unique facility mimics the flight test scenario, allowing each team member to monitor parameters and perform other real-world test functions. Communication channels allow the test director to talk to team members and pilots. Observation windows provide a view of each cockpit and display show the auto ACAS system in action. This important facility helps pave the way for smoother and more efficient flight tests. Equipping aircraft with auto ACAS could virtually eliminate mid-air mishaps, saving lives, lost aircraft, and millions of dollars. The need is critical, and the time is now. We need a system that will take control of the aircraft and maneuver airframes away from each other and it would happen before pilots even recognized that they needed to do something. And that's the key. We have the technology right now to make this a reality. And I think we have a responsibility to my wingman who died, to those that have died from mid-air collision, and those who will die from mid-air collision to do something about it. It's worth the cost of this program. It's worth the cost just if you save one airframe. We can do this right now.